Right, Cham. So today we are talking to Dan, who joined our 16 week growth infrastructure accelerator about six weeks ago now. And we've had a fun time. We've probably implemented about 25% of his kind of growth infrastructure so far. So he's got a long way to go. But last week he hit our grail one of our grail milestones at creator launch our kind of three main grail milestones are quitting your nine to five reaching your first 20k month and then the big one is reaching your 100k first 100k month and dan hit a record month past 20k i think he got 21k and uh, he was stoked so we celebrated last week and dan's really fun because he coincidentally lives in the same town as my parents so i got to spend some time with him went for brunch the other day and he was very kind he got me a uh, a new copy of one of my favorite books uh shoe dog by phil knight if any of you guys read that he got me a copy for my birthday so shout out to dan and yeah in today's one we're going to be chatting to him about basically kind of what has changed for him over the past five weeks since joining us and really where he thinks his success has come from He's got a really interesting offer, very excited to dive into it. So let's dive in. Dan, thank you so much for agreeing to spend some some time with us on, on the channel and having a little chat today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Cool, Dan. Okay, well, how about we start by giving a little bit of context into uh, who you are and kind of like what, what you do and what your job is, because I think you've got a really interesting kind of maybe a, um, uh, a kind of like pseudo fringe offer that people might not be familiar with i think it's super cool um so i'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, about kind of like what it is you do so sure. so i started my career as a professional poker player and started doing that at 19 as you can imagine dad was very proud and um <laughs> but after um playing poker five or six years i got really interested in mindset i worked with a mindset coach and hypnotherapist and it was really really life-changing for me and so I essentially decided that after a while, that was the direction I wanted to take my career. I started off working with poker players because that was the niche and the group that I understood. And poker is a very emotional game because in 95, 99% of jobs, people don't actually lose money, right? It's like they're making money, they're paid a salary, or even if you're you know, a business person, you could have good months and bad months, but you're generally not having losing months unless you're in a startup or something like that. So when you're a poker player and it's usually your own money that you're betting, it can be very stressful, right? Having losing weeks, losing days, losing months. And the emotional um, pressure that brings up is quite difficult. So I started helping people with that, dealing with anxiety, the frustration of losing, um, dealing with the mistakes. And after a while, um, someone found me, a guy called um, Ollie, who is still a client to this day, uh, he was a trader. And he was like, man, I'm, you know, I've heard about you. Um, uh, I, I'm always interested in reading about poker mindset because, um, you know, it, it's so similar to trading. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, it's like the same thing. So he's like, well, would you take me on as a client? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's, you know, see how it goes. And what I didn't expect, I thought, okay, maybe this will work half as good or 80% as good. And the guy will still, you know, he'll do very well. And the weird thing is it worked better because with trading, it's even more mental. So, uh, you know, I decided to, uh, I was having great results with him. And I asked to speak with um, his, his boss, the guy who manages the trading firm and do a talk. And I wasn't expecting anything back. But he was like, yeah, you know, can you come in a week on Monday? And I was terrified. Um, but I did the talk. It actually went quite well. I picked up some clients. And now my offer and my focus is moving away from poker. And I, I coach um, traders, improving their mindsets, dealing with um, similar things to what I was doing before. But it's really about dealing with their emotions, frustration, the anxiety, and uh, yeah, that's what my offer is now. Awesome, man. Yeah, it's um, no surprise that you are one of the most chilled out people that I've ever met. Um, <laughs> <It's always bad. laughs> yeah, 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 just to know what's going on inside. Um, but yeah, we we had a, we've got an interesting, I mean, 
if anyone is out there who is into the kind of the world of manifestation, um, we might be familiar with the idea of synchronicities um, and kind of weird coincidences. But mm -hmm. so myself, and Dan, uh, kind of um, had a couple of like weird coincidences. One is that he lives in the same town as my parents, um, which is a small town in the middle of the English countryside. Um, and I got the pleasure of going to going and having a, like brunch with him the other day. Uh, which is sick. So I'm going to turn up quite frequently to that town. So we'll definitely meet multiple times, um, which is awesome. Get to hang out. But um, also another weird coincidence is that I, in one of my last office jobs, I worked with your wife, which is yeah. a super, super <laughs> weird coincidence. And you were like, <laughs> you were like, did you work at this place? And I was like, yeah. How, and how do you know? And she, you were like, you used to work with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was just like, this is so funny. So that was actually after we started working together. Um, we found this then out. Then you which found was... out you liked one of my posts on Instagram and she Got saw you. that. Like, she there you go. We, we could still know each other and she wouldn't have found out. Like, it's <laughs> How mad is that? Like, would have, yeah. So super, super uh, like, funny that that's the case. But like, okay. yeah, dude. So um Let's talk a little bit about kind of your journey because you actually you, we've been only working together for about I think six weeks now. Like it's about I think six weeks uh, since you joined our growth infrastructure accelerator, and this is our you know this is our sixteen week accelerator where we help people just like yourself who are kind of experienced coaches, consultants, really just give them you know the the infrastructure they need to take their business to the next level. And when we kind of, I think the first time I saw you was on, on a workshop that I hosted a few months ago. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like where the decision to to join us came from and a little bit about like the decision process that you went through and and like always interested in knowing this because mm. people aren't, people hate taking action, but like why now? Yeah, so I think there are a few things. I think I, you know, I randomly found your content online. I actually remember it was a Alex Formosi video you did, which I think went semi-viral. because uh, I was interested in school and like the I was just wanted to hear more about people's thoughts on that. And then um that's how I found you originally. And then from there, I you were going through the notion, your notion dashboard that you created. And I was really impressed. And I I think always, you know. Judge people on the free stuff they give away because, you know, there's just that I think that's just how you see it. And I was like, okay, one, if this guy's giving like this insane value for free, he's at least worth, you know, looking at. Um, but for me, it was just, it lined up really well with what I was interested in. So the, you know, the combining of the of YouTube, of Instagram, of, you know, growing an audience, um, learning about messaging and everything else. When I saw that, I was like, yes, this is just tick, tick, tick. This is, you know, this is the the stuff that I want to learn. And it's not just, you know, because let's be honest, there's, there's different ways of getting to where you want to go in business, right? There's, you know, there's some guys just post stuff on Twitter and he's probably rich from that. There's other one who's LinkedIn or, or whatever. But for me, I decided that I really wanted some structure and guidance because there's so much stuff out there and so much information so easy to be distracted versus when you're working with a coach like you and it's like right here is what you're doing for the next two weeks or watch this video or this is the next part of the program it helps really just organize and structure your thoughts so yeah i came to the free um i guess webinar workshop that you did and um yeah i just really got excited by the model like when you run through, you know, the one simple ad and all of that stuff, I was like, this is exactly the kind of, you know, the, the, you know, the model and then the, you know, we've talked a bit about the client finance acquisition, you know, the idea of once you have your first client, the money from that, the ads and everything else that goes into the thing, that's what really kind of made me excited to jump in on the program. Awesome, man. And you're, you're clearly very experienced. But what was it about, like, was it just, do you feel like the timing was right? Um, but I know when we spoke, it was like, you know, like, I want to do this, but I think whenever 
and I, I, I talk about this and I've talked about this before in that the most, the highest ROI investments that you make or that I found that I made in my, myself, mm -hmm. they're always like uncomfortable. They're mm -hmm. never like comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell, tell us a little bit about kind of the decision decision around investing in yourself? Yeah, so I was actually listening to a podcast the other day and uh, it was with Gary V and he made a really interesting point. So his, he was talking about how he was going to start posting videos on Twitter or whatever. And he had this theory that Twitter would be good for videos or whatever. And the, the podcaster, uh, this is on my first million basis, said, oh, I'm not sure that would you know work. You know, that might be good. That might be bad. But I can't see that working out. And he said something that really resonated with me. And I thought back to, you know, our earlier conversations and what made me jump. And he said, Sam, that's a really interesting point. But um, let me tell you what I'm interested in. What I'm not interested in is just making a guess about what will work or what won't work, because I don't know. What I am interested in is just trying something and then getting the feedback and then learning for myself. And I was like, this is a guy worth hundreds of millions. This guy who owns Vayner Media, who knows more about social media than probably less than 50 people in the world, you know, no more than he does. And yet he's just like humble and trying stuff. And he's just like, as long as I keep trying stuff, I know I'm going to get there in the end. And I think that's what came to me as I was making the decision. Yeah, it was a lot of money and it was, you know, it, it was a little uncomfortable and it was, you know, a bit of a scary thing for me. But ultimately, I realized that the pain of not doing something was going to be greater than actually, like, I, I made the joke to you, I was like, you know, I feel better if if I spent the money and did this and it was a waste of time. Like at least I've tried something. At least I'd say, you know what? I gave it a go and it didn't work out, but at least I tried rather than being stuck in analysis paralysis. Oh, maybe I'll watch another 10 videos. Oh, you know, because you can be in that space and then two years goes past and the two year version of you that would have jumped, that would have got the following, that would have done this is now going to be 10 steps ahead of the, the version of you that didn't. So I just realized that actually, you know, Alex von Mosey talks about that phrase of one entrepreneur, right? Someone who's read all the books and watched all the videos and could probably, you know, have a conversation with Warren Buffett about business concepts. But actually, you know, they haven't built Birch Hathaway, they haven't done anything. And I kind of started thinking, you know, am I going to be this person that's just analytical and likes the knowledge and, yeah, watches videos and, yeah, can be fluent in these things but actually isn't taking the action steps to ultimately get where I wanted to go and the second thing that made me do it is I had a kid recently who's five months old and you know I'm in a very very fortunate situation where because of the way that you know my office structured and I have guaranteed clients coming in from the trading firm I coach at I really you know to survive and have a comfortable life I can do that three, four hours a week. Like it's that would be very easy for me to basically be semi-retired and just work with a few cool traders, one a day or something, and it would be fine. But then I thought, you know, do I want my son Louis watching his dad basically do the minimum? Knowing that it would be a comfortable life, but is that the kind of, you know, it, am I in instilling any kind of the the morals, the good habits, whatever? And when I'm 60 or 70 or 80. Would I require, would I regret just going for it and pushing hard and seeing how hard I, you know, how high I can take this? Would I regret just sitting back? And, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos talks about the whole regret minimization framework. And I just went, actually, you know what? Yeah, most things people regret, the things they don't do. And so I decided to take the plunge. And I was nervous, but I'm, uh, I'm very glad I did. Nice, dude. I mean, it's... <sighs> When, when we started working together and it's uh it's always amazing when i get the chance to work with new people and you my job is to just provide kind of like i talk about this i talk about how my job is to provide kind of like 80 percent of the the structure the um the roadmap for you to build build the infrastructure that you need to take this to wherever you want to go mm -hmm. but the other 20 percent is you doing exactly what gary v said which is testing iterating and finding out what works specifically for you and your offer, your market, whatever. And I can't do that for you. Yeah. And so I've seen your 
you know, I think one of the, the, the really fun things about working with you is that you just, you just got straight to work. Like it was just like straight into it, just cr like crushing every single thing. And, um, that's always like a pleasure for me to see because it means that I'm like, okay, great. Well, um, Dan, like all I need to do is just provide the next steps for Dan and he's just going to, he's just going to crush it. Uh, so super cool. I, I think I actually don't think we really talked about this much about how you felt like there was, um, what I talk about, what, what I've kind of positioned this is like, there's the return on investment of an investment that you, that you make either in yourself or to whatever. And there's the flip side, which is the cost of inaction. And that is, I don't think we really spoke about that, about how you felt like you had all this maybe knowledge, you know, you clearly are super well-read and knowledgeable about the entrepreneur space, mm -hmm. but it feels to me like, yeah, like this is now your time to deploy all of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like that? Does it feel like it's like, okay, yeah, this is my time to just, uh, and I can see, I can see the proof because you are just crushing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So I think that one interesting way to think about it is that thinking about the end and what an action now costs you at the end. So Elon Musk talked about this when Tesla had like 20 people and made like one car a month or whatever they were doing. And he basically said that, you know, every, you know, there will be a time when we're making, I can't remember the number, but it was like 10 million a week or something or 50 million a week. And he basically said, every you know every day we we cost ourselves here it isn't you know that this tiny thing oh we have 20 people and it costs 100k a month to run tesla he said it's costing us that 10 million so so it's like think about what it costs you in the end and um yeah i mean now that i've taken the action and i'm starting to see just the movement you realize that the first step is always the hardest the first one is always the just and you know i had it even i brought on a client the other day and he was nervous and so like, oh, what, what if it doesn't work and you know and it was like it's but it's you know it's the resistance right it's like the war of arts in press field it's like the thing holding you back from from doing the work from jumping in like or the fear of failure or the fear of you know what what will other thing other people think judgment i mean it was it was funny right i started posting on instagram and a bunch of my friends, you know, obviously saw it because I'd already had them on Instagram from like whatever, 10 years ago or something. And they were just like, oh, yeah, you did some videos. Cool. And I was just like, whatever. Like, no, like we talked about this, like no one cares. Like none of your friends care that you're doing Instagram. Now. None of them care that you do a YouTube video. And if they do, then also who cares? Like, the <laughs> not that cruel anyway. <laughs> so yeah, man. that was it. I, I've just found like the idea of like, now you're in head. You're going to start and just the success is taking action. It's not, was this good? Was this bad? So what's helped me is I'm not even judging what I'm doing. I'm literally just like, did I do a thing? Uh, you know, oh, I stuttered on a video or, oh, this is not good. Or, oh, I had a bit of fluff on my hair. Doesn't matter. Do another video. Like it's just bang, 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 bang. And having the structure of the course and, you know, being in a community of other people and seeing you know, you saw Austin yesterday, like, to quit his job and other people, you know, doing offers and stuff. And that's like normalizing, you know, you know, exciting behavior. It's normalizing people launching stuff and doing things. And um, yeah, that's been really helpful for me. Yeah, that's awesome to hear, man, because, yeah, even to, to hearing your when you when I saw your your like win in Slack the other day, like it. it <sighs> It is like the the feeling of seeing you guys win is like no genuinely like no like I I like do I get into that kind of like stupid like dance around kind of like fist pumping yeah kind of like just celebrating to myself and I'm like if, yeah. every, if anyone saw if anyone saw like a if I had a camera in here recording me like the Truman Show mm. um, they think I was a nutter but like I <laughs> yeah it's um seeing you guys crush it and like you said you hitting your record month yesterday austin when i woke up this morning and the first thing i saw at like 5 a.m was austin had quit his job which had taken him far too long to considering he had been he's been crushing it with his own consultancy yeah. for for so long now um and seeing seeing everyone win is just contagious uh 
yeah, like I got a message from uh, Jake this morning and he'd sent me a video for his new new ad. Mm. And kid you not, the best ad, the best short form video I've ever seen. Like just a, just hands down. And this is someone who, by being surrounding yourself with that kind of like level, mm. it just automatically brings you up because you're like, like now I'm like, oh, that is the benchmark now. And yeah. so all of us are like, okay, well, we know where we can we can get to and we're surrounded by these people. Um, so yeah, in- incredible to hear that, man. Tell me what what's kind of like what's next for you? Like where where do you do you, have you kind of maybe have you had any kind of like perspective shifts or maybe, you know, do you see what's possible? Or like tell me about like where you where your head's at now about the future. So you know, we I think we talked about this online recently about the video that Hormozy dropped about the woman who had the six thousand followers on Instagram was making like a million dollars a year, mostly from Instagram slash mailing list. And a mailing list is like three thousand people. Yeah. So and I know you'd mentioned before about the other coach who was doing like hundred or two hundred K a month, or whatever, and he had like ten thousand followers on YouTube or Instagram, yeah. whatever the thing. So it's it's like that mindset of if you grow an audience now, like, like to me, it's like thinking about, and I think this is, you know, I'm 36. If there's anyone watching this that are in their twenties, oh my God, like if you're in your twenties now and you can start building an audience, like it compounds, it yeah. literally just gets bigger and bigger. And sometimes like occasionally, I don't know if you see this, but I'll see a video on YouTube and I'll click on it and whatever. And it's like, you know, you saw that 30,000 people watched it or something. And they've got 80,000 subscribers and it's not even good. And you're just like, but someone's got 30,000 people to look at their thing. So it's the idea that you can make so much money from a relatively not even that big an audience. And, you know, if you have an audience, you can feed your family for life. That's literally it. Mm-hmm. So building an audience and, you know, it's like, you know, you're gonna, it's going to be a grind for like a year or two in terms of really getting that traction going. But then suddenly, you know, it's it's probably way easier to go from, say, 10K subs to 100K subs, which I guess, like, that's where you are now, right? Then to go from 0 to 10K. So once you have that wheel yeah. growing and you're making good stuff, then it's like, well, I guess, you know, it's just another 80 videos or 120 videos or whatever. It's just a number then. So for me, that was a big perceptive perception shift of just, like, growing an audience. Um, but the other one is just... You know, like I went on a stag recently. I was talking to everyone there, and they all had good jobs. Very, you know, there was one guy who's like literally had a meeting with the Saudi finance minister the last day of the stag, uh, and everyone was just like, "My God, what's he going to do? This is absolutely insane." Um, but there's a bunch of really, really successful people there, but there was only one guy who's self-employed, and he uh, had a building company, which is you know, it's not online. It's very different to what we do. And I just had this thought of like, actually, I literally, in terms of all my friendship circle, I genuinely just know like maybe four entrepreneurs, like out of everyone. And so, and then, you know, some of those are doing quite different things. So actually there's being in a community and being just like normalizing that is is just, you know, it's it's really, really powerful. Like it's it's really, really helpful. And when you see other people winning, like you said, it's it's a really contagious thing. It just like makes you happy for them. Like the happiest I get, exactly what you were saying, man. Like when you were talking about that and seeing my success and having my biggest month, I got emotional, but it wasn't for me. It's because you reminded of a time when a client had a massive win. And, you know, I've cried because I'm so happy for clients a couple of times. Like generally I'm welling up a bit now because it's like, that's what we're doing for. The money is an amazing thing, yeah. you know, great. But legitimately it's because you're able to help people and change lives. And just when you, you know, the, the real thing I thought about to answer your question, the real biggest shift is that we, you know, one day I'm going to die and I want to have a positive impact on the world. And, you know, you can either have growth or you can have comfort. And which do I want? Do I want to have a bigger impact or do I want a smaller impact? And do I want to grow or do I want to be really comfortable? And when, you know, you make that decision, um, yeah, growth is, it is uncomfortable. 
but it's really interesting, you know, when you see young, young people. So I'm, you know, as I'm trained as a hypnotherapist, and you realize that all these limiting beliefs, fear of failure, is this is all just like faulty programming you pick up along the way. If you see a kid learning, you don't see kids not walking because they don't want to look stupid in front of people. They're not like, oh God, I might fall over. Mum will see me. How am I going to deal with that? No, they just walk. They just, and they fall over and they go, oh, screw it, I'm going to do it again. And you see kids when they're young. I went to a you know family get together and this little kid came up to me. He, you know, I didn't know. And he was like, hey, do you want to come play? And I'm like, yeah. He wasn't like, oh man, there's a guy there. He's like seven years, seven times older than me. No way he's going to want to play. No, it's just like, hey, do you want to play? You didn't have fear of failure. So to me, it's like, you know, we're, we're born without these things. We just pick up this faulty programming. If we can acknowledge that and understand that it's not us, it's just like a, a bad fitting coat that we put on. Um, yeah, I find that very helpful. Well, I want to that, but... Yeah, no, dude. So tell us... Um... Because it's quite rare that we get an opportunity to have someone who is, yeah, trained hypnotherapist and a mindset specialist. And, you know, it's Tony Robbins who talks about how the famous, famous, he quotes like 80, you know, success is 80% mind and 20% tactics. And, you know, for you, you've kind of like, I guess, looking back, it kind of makes sense now. I'm like, oh, the guy, genuinely, it was the, for you, it was just making the decision to be like, okay, I don't want this life. Mm. Like, as in, I don't want the comfortable life. I mm. go, I want the growth, the growth life. And you made that decision and you took the step to kind of invest in yourself, mm. um, which, you know, just as a side note, I do think like, and I, I don't say this to scare people, but I definitely do think the next couple of years, like if you do, do not make a big step forward with your kind of personal brand and audience, I think it's, life's going to get challenging like genuinely believe that and so I, I like when i see guys like you who i get to know as friends and who are making that kind of move i'm just so 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 gassed for you because it's like i, I know that you're you're going to be on the on the better side um which is unfortunate but yeah back to kind of the the mindset stuff mm -hmm. it sounded like it was the decision to it wasn't the decision that like okay, I, I need to, I need to improve. I need to get about this. Actually, I just, I just need to decide to go from comfort to growth. Mm -hmm. And no, like knowing that because you've, you, you've moved pretty fast with stuff. Not everyone does. What do you, what would you say to someone who's like, you know, probably maybe what would you say to someone who, who potentially is wanting to grow their business? Isn't as aware of like, their the mindset stuff that you are what would what kind of advice would you give them um at like the early stages of their business so i heard a thing the other day um from robert green and he said that the most important thing is self-awareness and um i think that as i get older understanding and thinking about self-awareness is super super critical and from a business point of view, to me, that's like being honest with yourself. Like, what am I good at and what am I bad at? And understanding that, you know, I talk to my clients sometimes and I say that sometimes there's a mountain and there's only three things you can do with a mountain. You can avoid the mountain and walk around it. And that might be the right thing to do, right? It might not be a mountain you want to climb or deal with. Um, you can kind of climb the mountain and overcome it. Or you can kind of grind through it and just like force your way through the mountain. And there's never a right or wrong answer in general, right? It depends on the mountain, it depends on the person where you are. Um, but, you know, like you, it's like the Hormozy thing, you know, it costs you, you know, 950K every year that you don't have the skill set to make a million a year, right? Like it, it's that same thing for me thinking that, well, you know, if I'm going to learn this stuff, you know, yeah, maybe you could do it on your own, but if it takes four times longer, like how much is that actually costing you? And when you think, oh, it would probably cost me like a hundred times more than the course would, then it's like, well, yeah. Like if, if you're, if you're serious about this, when, when you see people who are hyper successful, um, the one thing that I've noticed, which is really fascinating. So just for context, I coach a lot of people, and most of them are on six figures, some are in, in seven or mid seven figures a year. 
And what I've noticed about uh, the guys who are earning really high amounts of money, they're, the, they're more humble and more open-minded. So they, they want more information. And the guys who make the most money, I hear them taking notes and calls all the time. They're like, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down. And you can literally hear them writing down stuff. Um, and so I think that the idea of just seeing someone who's, you know, having success on, you know, like you're literally teaching people to do the things that you've already done, right? Which is, you know, grow a presence on YouTube, on Instagram, post the stuff. When people see your content, right? They know that it's, you know, they know that it's good. It's well produced. It's It's got a certain feel to it, right? The way you're presenting, the way you're talking about it. And so it's like, well, you know, you can try and read all the books and try and self-teach yourself. But the problem is life is finite. If we all lived to 500, it probably wouldn't matter that much. But, you know, if I've only been working for another 30 years, I, I really think that just you spend the money to get the skills is the best trade-off you can make. Like it's just so much faster. Um, and it's it's easy to see that in my own work when I talk to people and they're like, could I do this myself? I'm like, yeah, sure. If you like meditate every day for five years and you know read loads of stoic philosophy, maybe you could get there. Or you can pay the money and get there in like six months. Like, you know, and it's 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 easy to say that in my see that in my thing, but then when you shine the light on yourself, you're like, I should do the same thing. I ask people for the trust in me. And then I grind incredibly hard to make it one of the best investments I've ever made, if not the best. And, you know, then you just have to have the belief that there are other people like that out there who are doing the same and can do the same for you. And I think when I realized that and just accepted that, then, you know, it, it's just like the, I, I think I was open to it. And, you know, we talked before about the, you know, creating things, manifesting things and stuff. And it, it's just, I've really felt it was the right time in my life. And you just, bang, you, you popped into my YouTube. Like it was really, felt very fortuitous. Awesome, dude. Yeah, look, um, I, I've i had some big, big kind of perspective shifts. Uh, one was, again, listening to a podcast. I've spoken about this before, um, I know, with, with you and and others, but heard uh, Chris Doe from The Future, mm. one of the biggest um, personal branding experts in the world, and just casually in an interview, someone asked him about how, you know, if he invests in his kind of education and get coaches and stuff. And he said, he was like, yeah, I've um, I've been spending three grand a month on a business coach for like 13 years. Okay. and the guy the guy the guy's mind the interviewer's guy my, like the guy was mind blown he mm. like made him stop and was like whoa whoa, whoa whoa every month you've been paying three grand for 13 years oh. um and he was like yeah like like he's i've been working with the same business coach for that long mm -hmm. and i that is and it's just it's like People, unfortunately, do, you know, again, Hormozzi is a great example. The guy is a big proponent, obviously, of the of education. And yeah. I think he, he talks about investing like half a million dollars into his education. Mm -hmm. um, definitely for me, I'm, it's kind of like my, you know, people will have like the things they like spending money on. Mm -hmm. um, my, my thing is education. Like, I'm like, I, I'm just like, it it's just yeah it's like where do i go where where can i go and learn from next who can i get as a mentor next who can i buy as a coach next who can i invest like what course i'm always you know because everything else takes care of like that takes care of everything else yeah. like when once you've kind of got the skills you've got the knowledge and you get to a certain certain level then that's everything you want is taken care of but you need to invest in the skills to get you there. I just want to touch before we kind of wrap things up. I want to touch about, I've had been thinking about this recently um, around skills. And I think I'm going to make a YouTube video on this because I think people talk about it too. They don't give context to it. They say you need skills. You just need to, you know, you need to, to be, to have an, have a business, become an entrepreneur. You need to like get skills. And it's like, well, what, what the hell does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. Now, when we work together, what I've done is I've tried to make the actual skills themselves um, 
I've tried to make them as kind of like slam dunk as possible for you guys. So I've created like a checklist, which is these are the things you need to do. And then here is how to do it. So here are the trainings, the templates, the whatever. And the truth is, is that there is quite a lot of stuff. Like, and it may, you know, I guess like, I, I don't think people talk about the granularity of skills mm. enough. Like, I think it's like they say, oh, you want to be a video editor. You, you know, and people would think, oh, I just need to learn how to edit videos. And it's like, and the hundred other skills, micro skills. Yeah, you need yeah, to learn. Yeah, 100%. Marketing, tell, yeah, to people. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. T t tell me tell me a little bit about kind of like your awareness of you know especially i guess since joining you've mm -hmm. now you've seen the roadmap so you know the roadmap you know what you need to do we've we're kind of like chipping away at things because things take time to implement um but yeah can you talk to me a little bit about your kind of awareness of skills as a, as a business owner and where you think you're at and where maybe you think you need to grow into that's a really interesting question um Yes, for me, you know, talking before, you know, like the growing an audience. So it's just like getting good at content. Like if you're good at content, everything will flow from that. Like, you know, you could be the worst person at sales ever. And, but if your content's good, then people are, are going to be kind of, you know, into your stuff and you'll, you'll have people coming in. So the skill that I think I need to maximize and really focus on is growing my YouTube presence, learning about that, which is, like you said, it's not just filming and writing, it's then editing. It's like, okay, what about, you know, I'm getting camera, what kind of camera am I going to get? Yeah, you know, what am I lighting? You know, what, you know, how am I going to use inflections and editing and getting an editor and getting a thumbnail guy, right? There's like 20, 30 different skills within the YouTube bracket. Yeah. So, but like you said, it's chipping away, right? It's like, okay, get a thumbnail guy, fine, check. Okay, fine. Try some basic editing, fine. And just, you know, working away there. Because, you know, th there's no other approach to that. I guess I'm trying to think on top of that. The other thing, one thing that I've really enjoyed from the course is the sales training. So, um, I mean, it's probably already paid for the course because I brought on a client, my last client, it was very, very kind of skittish. It was quite a lot of money for him. And um, I really think that the new sales script that went on with you, the NEPQ questions, man, that was just killer. I just went through it. And I I kind of read through it before, but I hadn't like said it out loud. And I was just like, I was quite nervous because I'm like, oh, literally, this is not my usual thing. And then the voice of my head was like, Look, just do it. Just get the script go through the questions, just do it. It'll be, you know, if you lose the sale, fine, it'll be a funny story, just go for it. And I'm saying it, I'm like, wow, this is really good. Like, this is really exciting. And so that was just another skill that I think, you know, I've, I've only done that once or twice so far, but getting better at that and, and you know, learning more about the sales side, which I think was already decent at, but it's it's another massive upgrade. Um, but yeah, there, there are two things that come to mind. Um, That's great. Yeah. Interesting you say that because you, you're just saying that out loud. I know that you, like, because you obviously, you text me after you, you know, you, you, um, you close your new client and you said you've gone through the sales stuff. Uh, but very interesting to, you, when you verbalize that, that very much sounded like you were, you were battling resistance there, right? 100%. Because you're like, it's, it's oh, yeah. It's my old little, yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and it takes, te yeah. Uh, but this is what we're up against. And this is the benefit of being, you know, one of the big things of working kind of in a, having a kind of a mentorship kind of coaching uh, relationship is it's accountability. You know, I, I speak to my clients all the time and they, it's funny how many times they get stuff done purely because they know they're about to get on a call with me. I'm so they get stuff done. I'll call me on Thursday, man. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm like four hours my kid was up in the night. I haven't got time for any of this shit. <laughs> and if it wasn't on Thursday, I, I'd be probably taking a very light week, but I'm like, oh, I've got a book to read. Get like, it, I'm, get I'm it gonna, done. I'm going to put some steps forward. Yeah. Is it going to be stuff. perfect? No, but I'm, I know I'm going to do more than would I not have that call booked in with you. And for me, you know, I, I think everyone needs accountability. It's so, you know, like, otherwise, why would people have managers in companies, right? They're literally just checking people's results. 
Um, and they did a really fascinating study years ago, um, which you know people learn about in business studies and psychology, where they they got a bunch of business analysts and they kept changing. They went to a factory and they changed a bunch of factors. So they're like, what will happen if we up the temperature by five degrees? What will happen if we lower the temperature by five degrees? What if we play classical music in the background? What if we do this? And they did them. And every time they did a change, performance went up. And they were like, how can increasing and decreasing and just like, how's it all do it? And then they realized like, oh no, it's because we're watching them. It's because now they have oversight and accountability. They're more self-conscious. And now they're doing this stuff. It's called the Hawthorne effect. And it's so true that if you're a one-man band and you aren't in a community, you will, you know, by your nature, just by human nature, you'll let stuff, stuff slide. It's really hard to be constantly tough on yourself when you got someone saying, hey, can we do beers on Friday? And then you've got, you know, you know, you know, child responsibilities, or you've got other things, or you know, you didn't sleep well or whatever. Like there's always a thousand reasons not to do the work and having accountability and also just you know wanting to yeah wanting to be contributing positively to the community and wanting to you know measure this success and you know that everyone else uh is having a part of that is so critical i i genuinely think like the investment would be worth it even if there was no like just the accountability call every two weeks and running through next steps. And that was it. Even if you never taught me anything, it would be worth it. And then just the community and just seeing people winning every day. Like we've yeah. had a run recently in the group, which is like, you know, Austin had his thing. And then like someone, I can't remember his name, but like a 60K launch or whatever, then I had my biggest month. And it's like, this is just the beginning. This is like six weeks into my thing. Like, What's going to be going on, you know, towards the end of it? It's going to be insane. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, it 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 you know it feels very really good, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really glad I I took the jump. But usually, when you feel that fear, I think ninety percent of the time when you take the jump and you take the risk, it feels good afterwards. Like you feel that resistance. I mean, I, I remember, you know. Like I felt it in things that were just the biggest slam dunks. I moved to Bali four months, felt resistant to why? I was living in a tropical paradise. I had, you know, I was living in a with a swimming pool. <laughs> resistance to that. So if you feel resistance to that, you're gonna feel resistance to everything. But expecting it and knowing it, I think is 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 really key to move forward. That's what I found. Awesome, man. And it's really funny you say that about how if it was just the community and maybe proximity to me with accountability and clarity on kind of next steps, you know, despite all of the resources and everything that we have that is helping you kind of do the tactical stuff, it goes back to that point, the Tony Robbins point, right? The success is 80% mindset. And I think just having, seeing, being, having the proximity to seeing others do it mm-hmm. and making it push you to push yourself and make sure you're, you're part of a, you know, contributing to the community, not just being, you know, being a voyeur, actually contributing. Yeah. Um, yeah, just forces forces progress. Um, okay, so Dan, I have really appreciated your time. And the final question I have, mate, is when are we next going to be doing this? And what is that milestone that you're setting yourself? Oh, the next milestone. That's a that's an interesting one. Um you know what I'm really looking forward to is getting the ad infrastructure up. So what I'm really looking forward to is getting to that point where, you know, it's still my business is still taking off, and there still feels like there's an element of uh, it not being fully predictable. So what I'm looking forward to is getting stuff so locked in with the ad with the, you know, uh, just like appointment setters and stuff, so that it's just feels that stuff is locked in and now my business is basically just a maths game and it's like how much do you want to make you just spend you know 10 percent of that on ads and then you just bring the people in you talk to them you attract the right kind of clients um you know like one of the things i love about you know your model is that you literally run a simple ad and it says if you're this kind of person join so you just grow a tribe of people who have said 
yes, I'm this kind of person. Like you're literally, you know, I tried growing an audience before and it's hard. Like I've got guys who are in car dealerships in Dubai and stuff. They're not my ideal client <laughs> while you're in there, but they were. And uh, probably great people, but, you know, that they're not going to buy anything from me. And so creating the next milestone for me is when I can turn around and go, yeah, I know within plus or minus 20% how much money I'm generating, like how much I'm bringing in this month um, in terms of targets and how much I could be making. I, for me, we talk about freedom numbers and stuff. For me, I think 30K a month is super, super doable. And I think getting to that level in maybe a year or two would be like a really fun, like a bit of a stretch goal, a bit intimidating, but I think it's definitely doable. So that I think would be, that combined with the ads would be really, really great. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. Like, um, hey, I'm here to push you. Um, I personally think you could do, go way faster and way bigger than that. And I'm, that's what I'm here to to help you with, man. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, you, and this is a bit of like, I guess some, some kind of coaching for people who might be watching who, um, people always want to jump the gun and they want to do, this is the the common thing is people look for lead generation first. And what matters is that actually you have proof that you can help people, case studies and testimonials, and you have a foundation and a clear offer and people forget those two things. Mm -hmm. And so I think the biggest lesson that I think, you know, you, and why you've got a great foundation is that you have lots of proof and it's a case of gathering testimonials, creating sales assets in the form of case studies now. Mm -hmm. And then when it, when it comes to like turn on the tap of lead generation, it's, you've got the thing that is going to convert those people. Like it's the, it's the conversion, which is tough, which is who is this guy? Can I trust him? Mm -hmm. And when you have those things and you have this kind of foundation built, it becomes like, that's the, that is the biggest thing that I think it is that is going to separate people over the next kind of five years. It's the trust factor and the trust factor. It, it is, I don't see a better way and a more effective way than long form content, just like this, mm -hmm. where you're showing conversations like we're having and showing our thesis, our unique mechanism, and just giving people the opportunity to spend time with us. It's how I've chosen my previous mentors and coaches yeah. it, it it for people who are like on the fence about doing that I, I i don't see how you're going to be able to compete with people like us who get over it and get it done like if you want to be an entrepreneur you have to get over uncomfortable things and the uncomfortable the most uncomfortable thing for most people is doing this kind of thing mm -hmm. the faster you do it the better you're going to be in a position where you can actually like compete in the market but yeah, I kind of just wanted to say that as just a like final, final note for for people because I see you doing this. I see you just like just saying effort. I'm gonna just do it. Mm -hmm. And I just hope if we can get across anything to anyone who's watching this, just effort, do it, surround yourself with killers, start posting, and yeah, you'll be golden. I totally agree, man. Like if you know, just smash a bunch of content see what works and you know it's not going to be overnight success but you know two three years your life will be completely completely different and, you know i'm just starting i'm still see myself as a white belt but it's going to be fun again and yeah like like i said if there's like a 24 year old watching this now man by 30 you could literally be just absolutely just dominating so hard so oh, yeah. yeah i i i you know Everyone wishes, right? Oh, if I could go back in time and buy Facebook stock in 2007. But, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, getting into this stuff now, you know, it's the best time you're ever going to get. So, yeah. Amen. Personal brand, your personal brand right now, invest in that as fast and as heavy as you can. And just like Dan said, you will be absolutely sweet uh, after two years. I say two years is the kind of like the period pretty much everyone needs. Um, and that's how long it takes hustle through that period. And then, yeah, like we're very lucky. We do live pretty chilled out lives where we get to like chill out on these conversations. So look, if you guys want to join us, come join us. <laughs> we're going to keep on having fun, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, Dan, we will see you in the next one. Uh, I'm going to force you on whatever that next milestone is going to be. And then we're going to, we'll be on here in no time.
Thanks, man. I really appreciate you. Okay, great to go home, mate. See ya. See you soon. Right, James, hope you enjoyed that. So if you want to get the full breakdown of our entire One Simple Flywheel model, I'm going to put up a link to watch the full video up there. See you in the next one, James.